All right, here we go. We're doing a big old bike ride today. The goal is to ride from my house in Payson over to Camp Verde. The problem is it's a holiday weekend and the roads that I was gonna travel on are gonna be super busy, covered with people with like RVs and travel trailers and they're very windy two lane roads that are dangerous already. So given the fact that it's a holiday weekend, I said, forget that crap, and I'm just gonna go the back roads. So I'm gonna take um, as many dirt and back roads as I can. Should be a lot of fun. Um, we're gonna go to some pretty places, but it is, it's already 1.30. I'm an hour and a half behind schedule, so I gotta get going. So here we go on this bike packing trip. Okay, I am five and a half miles in. I basically just rode from my house um, through Payson. And now I'm gonna go down the Houston Mesa Road, up, 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 up into the mountains uh, until I get to the town of Pine. So uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of people on the road. Definitely glad I'm taking the back roads. So I'm 15 miles in. Been riding for about an hour and a half. Very, very hilly, lots of climbing. I knew today was gonna be the climbing day. Tomorrow should be a lot more downhill, but we're doing good. It's a beautiful day out here. There's still some fall color left in the trees and being able to ride by the creeks is just awesome. So, gotta keep making my way up this hill. And uh, I think I got a, an idea for when I get to Pine. I might have to make a stop at the store, we'll see. This is by far my least favorite part. It's 10 miles on this really hilly dirt road that's super well traveled by campers from Phoenix. And they got their travel trailers and the whole thing's like washboard. It's just, it sucks, but I got 10 miles of it and I just gotta knock it out, so. Did I mention it was dusty? Oh. Um, right over here is actually where we shot the video for the Tinsel Connect. And right over there is where we shot the video for the um, drummer for the uh, Amic Hammock. So this is kind of my stomping grounds, um, but it is definitely neat to be able to, to ride my bike up to here. Usually we drive, so. Anyway, I've got about five more miles on this filthy dirt road, and then I will be in Pine. Okay, so I made it to Pine and uh, I got myself, got myself a little bit of sugar. This is gonna be so good. Um, so just a quick break and then I got, a, I got like a three mile climb straight up. It's like a thousand feet and uh, in two, two and a half, three miles. Um, so I can knock that out and then set up camp. So little behind schedule but doing okay pine is in a valley um, so the sun sets really quick here so i'm going to try to get up one of the sides of the valley as quick as i can and that should buy me a little bit of daylight so um probably a five six minute break and then back on the bike i feel like mountain dew should pay me something for this video come on mountain dew you could sponsor the lloyd living that'd be cool Okay, I made it. So I am just outside of Strawberry off of Fossil Creek Road. And I'm about 35 miles into my ride and I am gonna set up camp. So first things first is getting a fire going and then I'll uh, get my hammock and tarp set up. And then I'm gonna cook some food. So yeah, big day, um, but feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. This is what I needed to get ready for my race. I needed I needed to really push myself and kind of wear myself down to the bone so that I could rebuild um, this week and be ready for the race next week. Because next week I'm going like 125 miles in one day. So anyway, let's get camp going. Let's get some food cooking.
All right, now that the fire is going, um, I'm gonna set up my tarp and my hammock, and then I'm gonna start cooking some food. I'm gonna let this fire die down um, so then get some coals so I can actually cook with them. So, fire started easy, everything's super dry up here, um, which is why I was very careful to pick a site that had a fire ring. Um, and then I cleaned off all of the uh, pine needles and debris and everything around the fire because I just I can't afford to have any accidents here so um, being super safe taking our time everything's going well we'll be eating here shortly okay so I got my hammock set up and now I'm just letting my enlightened equipment top quilt fluff up. I'm just going to set it right here on the coals. Let it burn, cowboy style. Okay, the steak is done. And I'm just going to set it here to rest. Well, look at that bad boy. found this two by four. Look at that. Perfect. Mmm, it's perfect. Very tender. I'm still gonna eat some what is this? This is some soup, some cheddar soup, but it's a whole lot better with a T-bone. Mmm, this is all good. I was so hungry. Probably could have waited for the coals to die down a little bit more, but I'm famished. That was a big ride. It wasn't a big ride in terms of length i mean 30 miles really isn't that big of a deal but big elevation climbed over 5,000 feet today so that wears on you after a while my uh my hamstrings were just my quads were hammered on that last climb coming up hard scrabble my my right quad just gave out like every step was like a charlie horse and it was gone for about 10 minutes but it came back and i was able to finish up but yeah it was a big ride i wish i would have i wish i would have gotten up a little i wish i would have started a little earlier that was the plan but between work and then i changed the plan completely I just got a late start. The original plan is I was just gonna leave from my house and ride up the highway and uh, ride all the way to about the same spot, but which would have taken 10 miles off of the, the whole journey. But after I talked to my dad about it, he talked me out of it. He said, that's a two lane road all the way up and all the people from Phoenix are coming up for the holiday weekend. It's going to be packed, not just full of cars, but it's going to be travel trailers and RVs. And I was like, okay. But I never listened to my dad. So, well, that's not true. I listen to him all the time, but you know what I mean. Just waiting for things to burn down a little bit more. And then I'm going to bed. So there's the bike. This thing... This came in really handy. What I do with this is I set it up on the bike like that. So the flag sticks out a couple feet. And I found that uh, the cars really go around you when you got that flag sticking out. So I took this off my kid's old Trello bike. That was another tip that uh, Mick from the bike shop gave me. He's the guy who uh, rode from Canada down to uh, down to Mexico so yeah just have this flag 
it, it just goes in my bag like that, it sticks out like that, and then the cars really like to go around you. So here is the Simply Light Designs. This is the Winter Haven for the 90 degree hammock. Um, beautiful tarp. Uh, I have the pole mod. I didn't bring the poles on this trip just because I was trying to keep the load light. But I have it set up with a simple, um, oh my hands are really dirty, simple Dutch hook that goes around the, and so this Dyneema goes around the tree with, with a Dutch hook. And then it comes down here to a flea. That's it. Um, it's got nice pullouts. I've never used these before, but um, good pullouts. And then the hammock excel, it's, or the uh, tarp itself came with the line locks. So, and they just go down to a stake. Look, someone left the USB. <laughs> so, super, super cool tarp. Um, I also got the snaps. You can see the snaps here for the doors. So the doors snap shut. And it's just a really comfortable, very roomy tarp. And then in there you can see the, I've got the, this is the Gamma hammock. Now this version doesn't have a net, which I love. It's super easy to get in and out of. Um, obviously you can't use it in buggy um, season, but for this time of year when there aren't any bugs, it's just awesome, just in and out. Then I have the, um, this is my uh, Enlightened Equipment. Um, this is my Enlightened Equipment. It's a 10 degree um, top quilt. It's down tech. I think it's the Revolt. It's just awesome. Way more than I needed last night. Um, I was very, very, very warm. Then I have this old down pillow. I don't know who makes it or where it came from, but um, I take that on all my trips. So the plan now is just to get all this stuff back into the bike and get on the road. So um, I'm, I'm gonna skip breakfast and just, uh, I've got some snacks that I can eat from the bike and uh, I'm just, breakfast is gonna be some fig bars. And uh, cause I just really wanna, I'm a little bit late. I was lazy and I slept in. Um, so I'm gonna, Get it packed up and get going. I went to warm my socks and they melted. I was just drying them out. I didn't even have them near the fire, which is the crazy part. Like I had them like on a rock on the side these suckers just got hot. They didn't even stand a chance. So these were my favorite too because they were my pivot socks. But luckily I have another pair. Super sad. Sad day. So I got everything back in the bike. I miss my backpack. It's a lot easier in a backpack. Um, you know, you got those big, huge chambers and everything just stuffs down in them with the bike it's like a bunch of little pockets and you gotta this goes here and this goes here and everything's gotta be super organized and i'm getting better at it but it's still taking a lot of work so okay here we go down the road and uh we're gonna try to make it to fossil creek here This road's kind of technical for the old cross bike. It's doing pretty good, but yikes. All right, I got a flat. This dirt road is gnarly for these skinny little tires. And uh, so I gotta fix this thing up real quick. I can't, my, my spare tube I think has a hole in it. So I'm gonna try to patch it. I'm gonna play with it. Um, but it looks like, looks like this trip is over, so. Um, anyway, we'll see what happens. I guess the lesson here is 
check your spare tubes you know if you bring them um, check them this is the first flat I've got in over six years so there you go these things happen but uh, I'm gonna keep playing with this thing Catch. that's shredded that's shredded <laughs> unbelievable this is the spare tube and it's got three look at that thing this thing never had a chance what a piece of trash. Don't ever buy this tube. I don't even know who makes it. At this point, I'm calling it. I tried to uh, I tried to patch the tubes. That didn't work out. Um, my, my spares is full of holes. So we're gonna call it. Um, I got about 35 miles. 5,000 feet of climbing. The good, the good thing is, is I had a fun night camping. I got to enjoy a very delicious steak and I got to learn a very important lesson. That lesson is bring lots of spare tubes if you're gonna do something like this. Uh, I'm just very lucky um, if I had gone down this road just a little bit further, um, I would have been at a point where I couldn't get a car to me between the end of Fossil Creek Road and Fossil Creek, there's no way to drive in there. So I guess if it had to happen, I'm glad it happened where it did. Um, definitely uh, learned a hard lesson here. It's just been so long since I've had a flat. You know, I, I run I run tubeless tires on all my mountain bikes, and uh, I think I'm gonna convert these over to tubeless as well. So. But uh, that's the way it goes. Um, I'm gonna try to put the bike back together uh, as much as I can. And then Allison's on her way to come pick me up. All right, so Allison and Max and Addie picked me up on Fossil Creek Road in Strawberry. Six. And uh, now we are heading over to Prescott, Arizona. Let's go check it out. Okay, so we made it to Prescott and uh, we're just gonna walk around, do a little sightseeing, maybe get something to eat. It's a beautiful time of year to be here. <laughs> So we're at Watson Lake Park, right in the middle of Prescott. Check out this lake, it's pretty sweet. 